Clearly, our objective from the beginning of this program many years ago uh, was to train the future leaders of academic radiology, and our success rate is off the charts. No matter how you would measure it, it is the best training program for early career faculty uh, in America. the world be today without research? Well, there are those that dedicate their careers to finding out those answers and making our lives better. And GE is no stranger to this. Through the Research Academic Fellowship Program that GE has sponsored for nearly 30 years, radiology is now enjoying the research support that it didn't have back in the early 90s. Dr. Ruth Carlos, who works here at the University of Michigan and who I'm about to talk to, is the chair of the Board of Review for this fellowship and she's also a fellow herself. Dr. Carlos, hey. Hi. How are you? Let's take a seat. If you want to go in this one here, I'll take a pew down here. COVID fist bump, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Good to see you, good to see you. So what are the key pillars, if you like, of giraffe and briefly explain your role in, in, in the entire giraffe process? I am the chair of the Board of Review. As a chair, we, um, and the board together set the direction of the giraffe on a year-by-year -year basis, uh, including ensuring that the research that we solicit responds to contemporary problems. Because as you can imagine, over the 30-year span of the program, the types of problems, issues uh, that we need to respond to and do research in has uh, changed. Well, guys, uh, welcome to another year of the uh, giraffe board meeting. This is one of the best things that I believe the board uh, can do, which is to get together and uh, decide on our uh, next set of candidates. We want to look at the candidate as a whole, and that would include the candidate um, and his or her current achievements, their uh, research question, the research plan. What really stands out over those 30 years in terms of some of the benefits that the program has provided? For the fellows, the main advantage is to be able to be part of a research community that works toward improving care delivery. There are many training programs directed at uh, individuals who want to develop the technology. What the program seeks to train are researchers who want to understand what happens once you implement technology into clinical care. So it's, it's good to see candidates from other places uh, broadening the reach of the draft program. And the other thing I think is, you know, I think we're starting to see greater diversity of candidates as well. Dr. Grease was among some of the very first fellowships to be awarded in 1992. And I'm curious to know what was top of his mind when it came to radiology research back then. Now, Dr. Grease is in Madison, Wisconsin, which is about an hour away by plane. Dr. Grease, hello. How are hello, you? Mikey, Doing a little bit doing? of a COVID nice fist bump here. You. Yeah, yeah, nice to see you too. What was top of mind for research 30 years ago? What was your curiosity yeah. um, thinking about back then? Right. So back then, the field of cardiovascular magnetic resonance was just emerging, but imaging of the vascular system was brand new, and that's called MR angiography. And we were developing techniques for non-invasive MR angiography or blood vessel imaging with MR. So I was really excited about that and excited about uh, further developing those techniques. How has being part of the Giraffe Fellowship impacted your pretty vast career over 30 years? The most important impact was in the mentorship I received at the time, uh, going through the process, both in preparing the application and then in carrying out the research. And that was mentorship here at University of Wisconsin, as well as a broader radiology community. 
And, you know, there's that saying, it takes a village to raise, you know, a child. And I was a child. You know, the impact of some of those board members and uh, senior investigators to further shape and call and maybe take some of the rough edges off of my work <laughs> was uh, really very helpful. Probably because of the additional ongoing mentorship that has had such a track record at producing stellar academic leaders down the road. The emphasis on technology assessment, it's kind of a broad critical issue for our field overall and, and uh, maybe the people that are attracted to that have a broader viewpoint that you need as a leader in academic medicine. Knowing what you know now, having been through the process 30 years on, what would you be advising someone that is making an application for the 2022 fellowship? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's a cliche, but uh, first and foremost, pursue your passion. You know, there's lots of opportunities for funding. It's really difficult to get. However, when you have that passion for really uh, exploring something and its impact on human health, you have that moral compass that keeps you going when, when you've had some setbacks. Dr. Gelaray Sadiq is based here in Atlanta, Georgia, and she's also a former fellow giraffe from 2018, so she's been through the entire board process. So I'm really keen to talk to her about how the fellowship has been instrumental in her career and why potential candidates should consider applying. And she should be over by this tree. Dr. Sadiq, hey. Hey, how are you doing? How are you? How are yeah, you? Let's good. do a little bit nice of a to see you. a little bit of a fist bump here. Why was it so important? Why was success in, in getting uh, the fellowship in 2018? Why was that so important to you? Yeah, you're going to have research uh, time and you're going to have money. I mean, that part is similar with others. But the part that, again, like differentiate here was that mentorship and the networking part. Uh, I feel like all the giraffe fellows um, are so supportive of each other. Again, like, I mean, being part of the giraffe community opened uh, a lot of opportunities for me, for from my co-fellows to fellows that were years above me or behind, I mean below me. And um, I mean, in terms of like I mean getting involved with committees, like lectures um, or like different journals. And I think like this, I mean, you, you find people that think the same as you, do the same type of research as you, and it's make the like collaboration much easier. We look not only at the project, but equally important, if not more important. Uh, is the environment that the candidate works in, uh, the candidate themselves, uh, the uh, career development plan and mentoring plan that they have, uh, and who their mentors are. Um, and um, really looking over uh, Gellaray's uh, application, um, she was outstanding across the board. What advice would you give to anyone considering uh, the fellowship? Yeah, so I think it's a great grant for junior investigators. And again, people that are interested in the health services research realm because of the focus of the grant. Mentorship and networking are the two things that I want to say are the top priorities for this. These are two unique things for this specific grant that you can't find anywhere else. And I think it's very valuable for your career de developments. After two superb conversations with Dr. Greist and Dr. Sadiq, I thought, wouldn't it be really cool to get them both on a remote call together to talk about how the program has evolved over the last 30 years and what that means for the future? Dr. Tom Greist, Dr. Galarai Sadiq, it was an absolute pleasure meeting you both in person. I'm back now in New York. Um, is there a particular subject that you both would find would benefit from research by applicants in 2022 that if you had your time again, and you were applying this year that you would absolutely recommend researching into. Dr. Tom, let's start with you. As you're aware, there's a, we have a, a big problem with physician burnout throughout medicine, including in the field of radiology. And so, uh, and our human resources are our most valuable resources. Uh, so I think projects that might look at how the impact of AI and how radiologists' interpretations and uh, work might be uh, improved by 
the use of artificial intelligence and how to quantify that in a in a clinical setting. Dr. Galloway? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, I mean, uh, I agree with Dr. Grist. I mean, I definitely a great deal. I think one other topic in addition to that is health disparity, especially with the COVID year, we saw how much we had widening of health disparity in terms of the outcomes um, between minorities and, um, I mean, um, non-minorities. Now comes next, what is the intervention? What should we do to decrease this disparity gap? And I think like research that, I mean, are focusing on, I mean, closing the disparity gap, whether it's in imaging or medicine, that's also, I mean, going to be a great topic. Yeah, I agree completely. Yeah, we really need that. And there are a lot of implications in imaging. And for those of you that are interested in next year's Giraffe Fellowship, you're going to love this next bit, what the board are actually looking for in 2022. It's always been important. Uh, and now the point has been sharpened uh, by our challenging experience over the last 18 months to say that that really needs to be part of what we look at. And in general, I, you guys may or may not agree, uh, it, it, imaging researchers have not focused a lot on this, you know, perhaps with the small exceptions of uh, population management and screening for breast cancer and things of that sort. Uh, we, we're just considering the patient in front of us uh, and, and not how our tools could be best distributed to those in the greatest need or distributed equitably. Uh, and to be able to rapidly answer these critical questions of, is what we're doing actually helping patients? Um, it's through learning healthcare systems. And, and I think COVID is a great example of that, um, where people needed answers rapidly uh, because we were in the middle of a pandemic and they couldn't afford to wait. We can definitely include that into our call. Thank you, and I will see everyone next year.